Welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how I made the embroidered flowers on my Ariel ball gown, so let's get started. For those of you that might have seen my Ariel ball gown, I have added 50 embroidered flowers onto the design. Um, to make these flowers, I actually designed them in the Floriani Total Control U um, software and then I brought them into my machine. I put them on a flash drive and I brought them into my machine. So this is a digital file that I made um, and I'm going to show you how I took the file and stitched it all out and made it into the lovely flowers that you see all over the dress. Um, so let's get into it. I'm going to start with explaining the materials I used uh, and then go from there. Alright, so let's start with the materials used for this design. First we have Floriani thread. Um, this is the 291 Seafoam Green embroidery thread. We have some Floriani Chrome embroidery needles. Water soluble stabilizer. This is from Floriani and this is actually a fusible stabilizer which is awesome. Organza. Duckbill duck snips. Some squeeze and snip scissors. We have sequins, beads, rhinestones, glue, we have a hoop, we're going to do this one on the small hoop, but um, when I did my designs they were on a larger hoop. And then finally um, you'll need your embroidery machine, an iron, and fabric scissors. All right, step one is to cut fabric and stabilizer. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna take our outer hoop and we are going to fold out, pull out our stabilizer and then we are going to make sure that there is enough around the entire hoop. So probably this line here and then we're just gonna cut it. So the stabilizer can now be set aside and we need to cut some organza. Um, the way I did these is I had two layers of organza for every piece of water soluble so I would actually sandwich them in between. All right so we are just like we're not gonna really fussy cut around any of this we're just gonna kind of eyeball it. Alright, step two is to adhere the stabilizer to your fabric. You can tell that this is the side with the adhesive by just touching it. Um, it is a lot rougher than this side. So I'm going to put this down and then I'm going to put my organza on top of it like so. And then on top of that I'm going to put my cotton pressing cloth. And now we're just gonna, um, on the wool setting, we're just gonna hold this down and it will adhere to the organza. You only really wanna leave it for two to three seconds on each spot. I like to go all the way to the outside edges. Okay. So now that our stabilizer is adhered to our organza, we are going to hoop this and I will show you how we're going to do that. We're going to start by sandwiching it. So we have our second piece of organza on this side. We have our stabilizer. Now we are going to place the hoop like so. There are lots of tutorials on how to hoop your fabric, so I'm not really going to get too much into it. I'm just going to do it. and. Actually, I like to have the numbers down here. So, there we go. All 
All right, step four is to actually bring up the design and then we're gonna change our needle and because this design is a, um, we need to have a bobbin thread for it, um, we are actually going to Yay! So because this design needs a bobbin thread, we're going to fill a bobbin. Um, we have our design pulled up right here in this corner. And then um, we're not going to hit go yet because we still have to put a needle in, thread our machine, fill our bobbin, and then change our bobbin. So I'll do a short time lapse of me doing that. All right, step five is to stitch it out. So we're gonna grab our hoop, like so. We're gonna hit go. And Okay, so I did not get any footage of me cleaning this up, but I basically, the next step, which should be step six, is clean it up, iron it, and cut it out. So, we're gonna do those. So I cleaned it up, pretend like you saw me do that, and now I'm gonna flip this over, and I'm just gonna like press this just enough. We're just setting our stitches right here. Fabulous. We'll do it on this side too, although we can't hold it for too long or else this will get gummy. Cool. This is where we get to use our duckbill scissors. Let's see if I can get these in focus. Of course not. There we go. And we're going to basically fussy cut all of this. But before that, I'm going to make my life easier and cut out with my fabric scissors first. So now we're just gonna go pretty close to this edge without actually like running into the edge on all of these. Sweet! Step seven, we is soak this in water. I'm not gonna show you me running this through the water in my sink because my sink is not clean, but I'm gonna run this under cold water uh, and then I'll bring it back and show you. Okay, so this is what it looks like wet and now we're gonna press it. All right, step eight is sequins and beads. And as you can see in here, if I can get them to focus, we've got some seed beads and some sequins. And I've got my number 10 
beading needle. And then this is just the bobbin from what we just stitched out. You can use matching thread. I chose to do that, but you could also use um, a stronger thread that is pre-waxed or that is um, just stronger. Um, I personally like using this, so this is what I'm using. And I will do one of these real time and then you'll get to watch the rest just as a time lapse. So I will triple knot this end. Two. Three. And then I will snip. All right, so now you're gonna take up the flower and we're going to focus on this center here. Okay, and I'm just gonna go straight through like that. I'm coming down. Like that, and then we're gonna come through that exact stitch we just made, like so. Grab a sequin and a bead. So now you will see me do a time lapse of hand sewing all of the sequins and beads onto this piece. Step nine is to sew these two together. To sew these together, I'm literally just going to create, go to, like, create a T. So I'll start at the top up there, and I'll go down, and then I'm starting at the left and going right, and then I'll pro I'm coming up here, and I am just filling in this entire section because all of the petals are gonna be free moving, but the actual center will be sewn. Now, what's really nice about how I made this is that it does not matter how many pieces of thread are there and how much can be seen because I'm gonna put a big old gem right there. Awesome. So if you can do that and they're not falling apart, you did a good job. You did good, kid. You did good. There it is. Tie it off. Snip it. And now it's time. For rhinestones. Look at them glisten. Look at that. Look at that. All right. 
I have an entire video on how to rhinestone, talking about the glue I use, the stones I buy, and all of that. So if you would like to know that information, you can follow the link that I will provide up at the top of the screen. Um, otherwise, enjoy this time lapse of me doing step 10, rhinestone. Yay! And there you have it, how I made the flowers for my aerial ball gown. Each one of these flowers takes just over two hours to make. I made 50 of them. Anyway, um, in the next video I'm going to show you how I made the puffy trim for Ariel, so stay tuned for that. And if you do like these embellishment tutorial step type videos, please let me know in the comments below. I like love embellishments and um, in the future I would love to do more videos on them. So if this is something you like, um, hopefully I will be upgrading my camera soon and therefore I can actually get better hand sewing content. I'm going to at least try for it. But um, thank you seriously so much for staying to the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time.